Hi, my name is Lee Kotner, and I'm going to be your instructor for MAT 125, uh, Web Design 1 Fundamentals. And uh, this is an online course. And so uh, one of the first things I want to mention to you is that if you've ever taken online courses or any other courses, I guess, uh, you're probably most familiar with Blackboard, especially at Maricosta College. Um, but we are currently in a transition to, uh, uh, at the time of this recording anyway, um, to uh, transition over to a new learning management system called Canvas. And so this is going to be new for probably a lot of you. You might use it at a different school. So, uh, But really quickly, let me show you how to access it in case you don't remember after I show you later if you don't remember um, the, the really quick address. Um, so if you go to miracosta.edu uh, for the main campus uh, website, then you can go under where it says classes and then where it says online education all right and then if you click on that you'll see that you can log into any of the currently supported lms's or learning management systems before very long blackboard and moodle will no longer be available the campus is transitioning entirely to canvas so you might as well go ahead and get used to it that's why i'm going to go ahead and transition all of my stuff this semester so uh, i will be honest and let you know that i am also fairly new to canvas and so a lot of uh, the faculty who are doing it this semester or are sort of like early adopters and um, we are uh, we, you know, if there are any kind of little snafus here and there, then we'll just work through them. So uh, no problem. All right. So what you'll do here is on the login screen, go ahead and log in with your W number that you would use to get like into surf. I'm going to log in with something different. Um, so don't mind me. Yours is going to be your W number and then also your surf password. OK, so let me get that in there. And <clears throat> If you uh, log in, you might see one of two things. Uh, and you m might possibly not even see this for the first time. You might see this other weird page that lets you go to the dashboard or something. So just click through that. Um, and then you should get to this. And it'll either give you this grid option for your different classes, or you can also toggle over to the list view. And what the list view does is it shows you all of these different uh, current things that are up and coming. Um, or messages that maybe you've received from uh, one of your uh, classmates or from um, one of your teachers. And then on the right, you see some up and coming things as well. I'm going to go back to the grid view. And this is uh, something that I think that a lot of people are going to end up liking so that uh, they can just quickly jump to any class by clicking on the badge. But before you do this, I want to show you something that's really important quite qu quickly. So if up on the left side, you'll see a little avatar. Um, right now, uh, it's just a, a blank avatar. So if you haven't uh, used Canvas before, I encourage you please to go here first for a couple of reasons. Let's go click on that. And let's first go to Profile. One of the first things that I would really like for you to do in this online course is I would like for you to edit this. And if you click the Edit button, um, one of the things that you're going to want to do is click on this Upload Picture thing that looks like a button, right? Well, this is sort of bad user interface design, in my opinion, because this is really where it says choose a picture. This is the link. All right. So if you sit here and click on that and, you know, email me and say, hey, that doesn't work. Well, it's really choose a picture. So choose a picture and let's just pick a I'll pick a picture of Mr. Potato Head for right now. And then you can modify it, whatever. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to hit save. What I'd like for you to do, though, is not choose Mr. Potato Head or a picture of a cat or, you know, a cartoon or whatever. Ideally, I'd like for you to find a photograph, if you're comfortable uh, of doing this, I would like you to put a picture of yourself. And the reason for that is that this is an online course and putting a picture of yourself actually really helps personalize the environment. But not only that, a lot of you take classes on campus and uh, a lot of times I'll go, uh, you know, we'll sort of be strangers for a long time on campus because we don't know what each other looks like. And so um, I would like to be able to say hello to you and know what you guys look like. So anyway, I'm going to hit save. And then the other thing that uh, I would like for you to do as well is uh, go ahead and edit the rest of your profile by adding biography and contact information. Uh, at least put um, an email address. Uh, and if you want to put a phone number, that's fine. I really don't expect that to happen. That's not something I necessarily even encourage, to be honest. So um, all right. Now, uh, the other thing, too, that I want to show you while we're here, and this is important, is where it says files. I'm going to click on files. 
And you'll see later that you're going to need to come here to upload some stuff. All right, this is important. Anytime, this is one of the things about Canvas's interface that I find a little bit clunky and weird. Um, and I'm hoping that they'll change this before too long. But is that if you want to uh, make a post on a discussion board, which I'll show you later, you actually first have to come here if you want to upload a picture that is going to actually visually display in the discussion post, uh, as opposed to just having it as an attachment link. So what you would have to do is come to your avatar icon thing up here and then go to files, right, which is where we are now. And then, uh, and then you can go to my files, right, and then you can go and create a folder right now there's already a folder here called discussions because I created it in a different orientation but what you could do is you can create a new folder here and you can organize any of your uploads for in uh, and this is by the way going to be across all classes so one of the things you could do is you could make something called discussions for instance or you could make a folder for uh, you know this class or a different class so that you can keep your stuff separate uh, you won't be able to upload into these other uh, course uh, things, or you shouldn't be able to. Um, you should let me know if you can upload into that. But um, anyway, and you would upload your stuff here. So let's just say that I want to put it in discussions, right? And there's already a picture of Potato Head, right? <laughs> but you could come here and you could click Upload, and this is where you'd upload your stuff. You would have to upload this here first uh, before you actually use your picture in a post. So I just want to make that really clear so that you can see that this is where you would come for that. The other thing too that I want to show you that's really important right off the bat is if you come here there's also a, a link for notifications. I want you to click that and I want you to explore these notifications. One of the things that I've been told about um, Canvas is that all of the notifications by default are set sort of at very high levels for everything. Um, to make sure that you get notified of stuff. Now, one of the things that is going to be annoying to you is um, <laughs> it, it's you're, if you get so many notifications from Canvas about your classes that you want to actually ignore them, my suggestion is to come in here and start modifying these so that you get only the things that are going to be important to you at the times that you expect them. So, uh, you know, for some things you always want to be notified right away. For other things, maybe you just want a weekly summary and so forth, right? So this is where you're going to explore that. If you want to leave all of your notifications turned on by default at a high level, you can do that and then see what's important to you and what's not and then come back here. But, you know, just be aware that this is something you probably want to come and modify. I've been told that it's sort of like trying to drink from a fire hose. You just get you know, you turn on the faucet and you get way too much information all at once. So, uh, but that's just what I've been told. Anyway, um, so come and check this out. All right, now let's go back to the dashboard and you'll see your courses. That's the dashboard. And from there, you can also do things like if something is coming up that's due, you can click directly on it. I'm not going to, but you can click directly on this and you can go and make a post or do whatever the, the prompt is. You can also view your grades from here, view your calendar, which is really handy. Now, the other way to view a calendar is right here. And I will say this, that the calendar function in Canvas is loads better than the one in Blackboard. Assignments automatically get dropped into the calendar. And that means that if you were to go to your calendar, for instance, I'll click on that, and it shows that I am currently as my my made up student account, right? I'm currently enrolled right now in two classes that have been released, which is, you know, on the right side over here. And you, you'll see that they're color coded as soon as the calendar actually shows up. You'll see that they're color coded. And right now, uh, yours might have opened up into a calendar view. Mine uh, last was on agenda. And so this is kind of nice. You can actually click on the agenda in the calendar and it'll it'll show you with dates in a list view of all of the stuff that's that's going to be due or that if there are events in the class and and things like that. OK, so all of this is kind of nice. Now, this is showing me 
uh, stuff that's for more than just this current class, right? But but that's kind of good, right? So all your class stuff will show up there at a glance. You can also click on the month view so that you can visually see what's going on and you've got a week view and so on. Um, you can also schedule your own stuff by putting it inside of uh, marking it with your own calendar. All right. Now let's go to courses here and you can always jump here. This left nav is always going to be there. Uh, you can go to courses and we're going to choose our course and it's going to drop you into the course homepage. And this homepage has been designed so that at a glance, you can always see what class you're in with this little icon up here. And you can also get to anywhere that's really important that you need. Now I will also say that on this left side, just to the right of the main panel, which is in blue, you also have, um, it's a, a course contextual uh, navigation, and this will show up for each of your classes, right? So when you're in, let's say, MAT 125, this uh, navigational menu is going to be contextually relevant to the current course that I've selected, which is in this case, MAT 125. So if I were to click on announcements, it would take me to the MAT 125 announcements. If, however, I was in a different class, like let's say that I was in a MAT 210 class or something, and I clicked on announcements, it would take me to the 210 announcements. You can also collapse that right here. Some, you'll notice that some of the links that are on, you know, this course menu, I've just left them open for you. So, you know, in case you get used to using them from other classes. The other thing too is just because another class that you might have lets you see all of the possible navigational menu items, I've only shown you the ones that I think will be useful to you for this class. So now the other thing too, I'm gonna collapse that for a moment. The other thing too is when you come to this homepage, one of the things that I've done is I've made uh, my own quick links of things that I think are important. And they're not necessarily all going to be the same things that are here. So that's important to know that I've added some additional things here as quick links. So if you wanna come here and not jump directly into a weekly schedule, which is listed here on the right, you could also say, oh, I know I need a certain discussion. You could just click on discussions, right? And you could go and look at all the list of discussions. So let's do that. If I click on discussions, it shows me the ones that are pinned. So that probably means that those are the most relevant. I will try my best to always remember to pin the ones that are current. If I forget, then you might need to scroll down and look for the one that you need, okay? Um, and you can collapse these. So, And then other, other ones, if I close them for comments, I'll drop them down here. Most likely, I won't close things for comments because uh, maybe for some discussions I will. But for the most part, uh, I will try to leave some, some of these things open in case you're running a little bit late. Um, I do accept late work on most things. Okay, so anyway, uh, and then if you want to always get back to that home page, you can always click up here on home or you can click up here on the course title. Um, in this case, it's SP for spring 17 mat 125. And then this is the course number uh, 1690, okay? And uh, so, and you can click on announcements. Right now I don't have any listed, but I, I will occasionally put announcements up there which also, by the way, you should get in the form of whatever you have set up to be your primary contact method, whether it's text messaging or email or whatever. All right, so uh, we have assignments. Uh, again, if you wanted to click on assignments, it would literally just pull up a list of all your assignments. And it also will uh, distribute discussions in there as well based on due dates, okay? So it puts them in a chronological order, which is kind of nice, I think. Um, and so, uh, if we go back home, you can always uh, jump to any of these things, right? Syllabus, we're going to go over together. I'll come back to that in just a second. Due dates, you see this little thing? It looks like a little arrow pointing outwards. That means that it links to an external site. So I maintain a totally separate website of my own that is my teaching site, uh, and it's called learn.leecotner.com. I'm going to click on this. This actually links to a specific place for our class, and it jumps into the due dates. All right, so this is just like a quick due date at a glance. Now, there are tons of other ways now with Canvas that manages this really, really well. And, you know, technically, I probably don't even need this anymore. Uh, Blackboard was not as good at that, right? So that's one of the reasons why I still have this set up. So as of right now, as of the time I'm doing this video, right, we will have this uh, due date thing always available 
if you need it at a glance when you're on my external website. Okay, and a lot of what you're going to find inside of Canvas, you're going to find that a lot of it links to that external site because uh, it's it's already there, it's all already available. And the other thing too that's kind of nice is that you don't have to log into Canvas to access it in the event that for some reason Canvas is down. Um, Blackboard used to be down for maintenance all the time, and so I kept a separate website grades you can click on grades to go and look at your grades at any time and you'll see here uh, that you know you don't have a score I don't have a score uh, grades are weighted and so one of the things that you'll find is for instance like the A anything that starts with an A means in its assignment it's like a project anything that starts with D is a discussion so that's what your grades are going to be made up of is uh, discussions and um, assignments you'll notice that sort of oddly it might seem odd that the projects or the assignments are all based out of a hundred points well just so you don't get confused the grades are weighted so if you look over here on the right this is truly how your grades are actually being distributed so assignment one is worth six percent of your entire semester grade assignment two is worth 12 percent of the semester grade and so on right discussions however if you look at this they are worth in total worth 10% of your entire semester grade. And so the way that I've worked that out is that you can actually see, if you look at your uh, discussions, like class introductions, that's actually also a discussion, even though it doesn't start with a D. Um, but you get, basically, it is 1% uh, percent of your entire semester grade. So you can kind of tell from this, because it's worth one point. Um, and uh, this understanding web concepts that's worth two percent of your semester grade and so on what i want you to be aware of is the discussion discussions a lot of times students will go oh it's only worth two two points it's only worth two points right and they sort of blow it off right don't do that if you look at this and you add all these discussions up you know that's 10 percent. that's an entire letter grade so if you're really bad about doing your discussions and you're not on top of it then that's a really quick way to completely blow a good grade all right or make a, an excellent grade just sort of a, a, a decent grade right so um, make sure you stay on top of that and the other thing too is that you know to be honest discussions are like some of the easiest things you're going to do in the class so why would you lose the points right so that's the way that I like to look at it okay so that's how you can always come back and get your grades I'm going to go back home the other thing too that you'll notice is that we have these weekly responsibilities on the right I will go over the syllabus in just a minute but what I want to show you right off the bat is the very first thing you need to do is click here where it says start here class orientation okay and I want you to walk through this entire thing I want you to read everything I want you to follow all the links even if you don't watch every video like in the canvas tutorial page there are so many videos so I don't expect you to do them all what I want you to do is I want you to click through this link though and I want you to see where they are and how to get them and how useful it's going to be so that you anytime you need to know how to do something in canvas there is a way to to you know find out how to do it canvas is very well supported the next thing um, is that we have this uh, I don't know if this is going to be two part or not I might change this um, depends on how long I keep talking but anyway it says video is forthcoming all right the video that's forthcoming is the one I'm recording right now so um, whether this is two-part or not I don't know it might say orientation video later uh, if I'm really long-winded I might split it up anyway so um, I'll try to keep it as short as I can though uh, but that's where the video is going to be and then one of the things too that I really want you to pay attention to is um, in canvas uh, I have to make the videos kind of small and when you do that what it does is it it limits the um, uh, interface button options whenever you've got a really small embedded video and so you'll have to click on this uh, this button that I'm sort of uh, hovering right now it it is the full screen button and when you go into full screen it gives you access to more interface buttons including this gear uh, icon that will allow you to to do things like speed my voice up like to speed up the video 
uh, it'll do thing or slow it down. It'll also allow you to adjust the quality. So like if you're having a really hard time with slow buffering and it keeps stopping the video, you can decrease the quality. Um, you know, as long as you're not losing too much detail in the video, you can decrease the quality so you can hear what I'm saying. And sometimes you can hear what I'm saying and just get a sense of what's on the screen and that's fine. And then uh, you can also like load something in the buffer so that it will low at a low quality really fast. And then uh, after you let enough of that load, you can jump to a higher quality when it's necessary. And then it's had time to kind of catch up a little bit. So there's some like tips and tricks that I would recommend uh, playing around with in this little settings button. And uh, you'll find that some of the videos maybe that, um, that I've recorded, maybe there are times when I talk slower than others. And you might be really happy speeding my voice up to like maybe one and a half times the speed so 150 percent right so that would make like a you know a, a, a 20 minute video uh, if you're speeding it up that much right it would make it uh, a 15 minute video which could be very valuable right um, if if I'm really kind of talking slow and you can stand to listen to me sort of chipmunky <laughs> chipmunk like at you know 200 percent or two times the speed then that would eliminate you know, and 10 minutes out of a 20 minute video. Um, and the other thing that I want to really make a point of saying is, please, um, if you are sort of one of those people who is really inclined to just want to skip sections because you feel like, oh, I know what she's talking about. I don't need to listen to this. Please, please, please. I cannot implore you enough. Just speed the video up. Listen to it because a lot of students who skip stuff they come back and say, oh, you never told me that. Well, I probably did, and you might have skipped something, all right? And a lot of times other students will actually, in discussion boards and stuff, will say, no, she said that, you know, in this video at this place. And, and a lot of times it's because people have skipped over it. So I implore you, if you are inclined to start skipping through, please just go and speed it up at 200% and, um, you know, sort of, scan and then slow it down whenever you hear something that you need to know. Okay, so complete syllabus. We're going to go over it, but I'm not going to read the entire thing to you. I'm going to only talk about the things that I just really want to pull out and make as highlights. Everything else you'll have to read. We'll go back to that. But you're responsible for reading the whole thing. Um, the help desk. If you haven't really visited the help desk, I can't uh, encourage you enough to go to it. Um, if you go there, and by the way, I currently have this orientation set up so that everything will open in a brand new tab so that you can easily navigate back over here to your orientation. So here, let me close this. All right, um, so I'm in the student help desk. It has all of their hours of operation, contact stuff. It's pretty valuable information. All right, the next thing, uh, uh, number four on the list, class introduction discussion post. This is mandatory, and I don't just mean because it's graded. I mean it's because if you don't do your first discussion post by Wednesday, the first Wednesday of class, I will uh, very likely drop you, especially if there are people waiting to get in the class, and currently there still are. So if you uh, go to this um, link right here, if you click on this, all right, um, then uh, it'll take you to the discussion and it tells you in the discussion in the prompt what you need to do and how you know you need to do it. Um, this is different, by the way, these discussions are different than in um, Blackboard. You can't create brand new threads by you know clicking something that says create a thread. What you would have to do instead is you would have to come down here and click reply. What you'll need to do if I click on reply, is I would have you start with uh, your name. So I would, you know, put my name, right? And then before I do anything else, I can go over here where it says paragraph, and I want to give it a header two style. And then I can start typing my, my conversation right here, okay? Whatever it is that I want to say. And then this way, right at the top, we can see who, what your name is. It'll still have your avatar and stuff, but... I think sometimes it's just really nice right off the bat. The other thing, too, about doing it this way is by you putting your name here, it's going to tell me what you want to be called. Like, so if your name is uh, Angela, but you go by Angie, then put Angie here, 
right? Put the thing that you want me to call you all semester so that I understand, okay? And then you would hit post, post reply. And if you want to reply later in the week, you'll see um, right now you just have your initial post and I tell you what I want you to write for your initial post. But later before Sunday, uh, before the first Sunday of the semester, um, you have to go back and respond to students. And so for that, you won't hit the reply button here. I'm going to cancel that. You won't hit this reply button. Instead, you would see a post down here that another student had made, and there will be a little reply button on that person's post. So you would click a different reply. It'll be like a little link, okay, not a button. Okay, and so that's kind of the way that your discussion boards are going to work, and you can easily access them. Uh, well, you can get this first one from the orientation. The other thing that you can do also, of course, anytime you have a discussion, is you can easily access them from the home page or from here, okay? So that you can go and do your discussion. What is graded in this course and what is not graded? All right, so the things that are graded are assignments, so assignment one through assignment six, and discussions. What are not graded are, but are still very important are any practice lessons, okay? Practice lessons um, would be like little tutorials that I might give you, or if you want to do anything that might be in the book, that's fine, that's up to you, but I'm not actually assigning lessons in the book, but you're welcome to do them if you want. They are not graded though, so don't do those and turn them in and expect that that somehow is going to be your assignment. It's not. So review the due dates. Uh, so just you know, click that. I've already shown you where it is, but review them and put some stuff in your calendar if you keep a separate calendar from uh, the one in Canvas. And then I want you to, as part of your orientation, go ahead and get started on uh, setting up Brackets. Brackets is a free code editor. I'm going to click on this and it takes you to my external teaching site where I have a tutorial set up. It's a tutorial page and I have a video and it walks you through and you'll see that this is a not just a video, it is a playlist. A lot of the stuff that I do are in playlists so that they're uh, set up in sort of like these chunks, usually like 15 to 20 minutes. I try really hard not to go over that. The orientation might be an exception. And it automatically at the end of part one, it'll automatically drop you into the or I should say part zero is what I called it. It automatically drops you into the part one and then it automatically drops you into part two. This shows you how to use brackets, how to set it up, how to configure your own personal brackets environment in a way that I think will be the best. And I tell you down here what each thing covers, okay? So you need to do that before you start your assignments. That's really important. The first two assignments are going to be definitely using brackets. The third assignment is Currently, unless I am able to uh, redo some of it, uh, it is using an editor called Komodo Edit. But after you do the first two assignments, you'll understand the difference. You'll understand that code editors are very simple. A code editor is a code editor, okay? And so you'll be able to um, use pretty much any code editor. All right, so um, connecting to the class mat server. All right, whenever you turn your work in, it's going to be put up on a web server. Right, so that we can view stuff up on the web. Well, you're going to to put the stuff up on the web. You have to use a process or protocol that's called SFTP, and that stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol. And so, to do that, you need some software for your home use. What I would really recommend is a product called Cyberduct, and it's free and it's safe to use. And there's a Windows version. There's also a Mac version. And here's a little video that shows you how to get started with it. OK. And actually, this is a playlist. There are two, two very uh, short videos. OK, so next is the textbook. The textbook is required. You just have one. And you're going to have some discussions that are graded discussions that are based on this. So uh, this is a very good book. And it'll really help you understand how this stuff works. All right, so that's that's the end of the orientation part. So when you get to the end of the orientation, you've actually gone through all of this stuff yourself, like watched the videos and gotten set up in brackets and all of that. Then you'll, at the end, you can either here click on the home page or you can go to the week one responsibilities.